So you want to transform your performance and get to the next level. Well, you come to the right place. Hi, I'm Troy Basham here with Lanny Basham, and you are on the With Winning in Mind podcast. And today we're going to talk about transforming your performance so you can reach the next level. And to do that, we basically need to talk about the difference between informational learning and transformational learning. And you have a really interesting take on this, so I'm going to let you you go ahead and explain what you mean from informational to transformational and why there's a difference and why there's a, a critical need to understand the difference of the two. Yeah, it's real critical uh, because information, you know, you, you have information in a lot of different ways. And you can, you can read a book and get information. You can watch a video. You can watch a podcast like what we're doing and get information. Uh, you can take an online course. There's all kinds of ways that you can get information. But and you, you know the information. You may even agree with it. You think this is something I need to do. That's informational. Transformational is it's like you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, there's a big difference. And the problem is that most people w make a, want a transformational result from an informational investment. And that's not going to happen. And we discovered this uh, for years. Uh, my, our, our company, Mental Management Systems, we were primarily in the informational business. We produced... Uh, CDs, you remember those? I mean, oh we yeah, did, we did CDs. Aud Mental management. Well, no, no, works. no, 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 no. You, you, you did originally cassette tapes. Oh yeah, I started out doing cassette tapes, <laughs> and and but we did cassette tapes. We did we did CDs, and uh, where you could learn, get information while you were driving in your car and and things like that. And when COVID hit, we transferred over to uh, uh, to the Zoom type of training and things like that. And it suddenly hit me that some of our clients, I mean, everybody gets a, it gets a little bit of a transformation from information. But some of our clients made major steps towards it being like them to do it as opposed to just knowing about it. And... Uh, and uh, way too many people were getting information without transformation. So and when we when we switched to Zoom training, the transformation picked up significantly, and I wanted to know why. Why was pe why why were people helped more by Zoom training than than? Coming to our, our 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 wonderful classes that we did, we did group classes, and people from all over the world came in and and visited with us. And it was because uh, after doing some research, I I found out that transformation requires five steps, and information's just one of the steps. Well, let's take information first. Okay. And then transition to transformational. Okay. So that's probably going to be the meat of the topic this morning. So info, you've been teaching for well over 50 years, coaching a lot of people. You made an interesting point. You said a lot of people want to transform their performance at a higher level with an informational investment. So I'm guessing what you mean by that is I want to pay as little as possible and get most out of it as I can. So what do you think? Do you think there's a difference of people where – because there are some people – I'm amazed by this, by the way. Now, part of it is because you did such a fabulous job on the book with Winning Your Mind. But there's probably a monthly basis that we are going to get an email from someone, a phone call from someone and say, hey, I read this book. It totally helped me. And it just it improved my performance. It improved my game. It, it made me better at whatever they're doing. Okay, well, that's an informational product. So they're able to take that and add to their performance. But you're saying it's limited. Or transformational takes them even to another level. Or there's some people that can get information and run with it. There's others that they're just going to be that much improvement unless they do transformational they're not going to get the next level. I'm saying that if you if your goal was transformation instead of information, 
if you're and, and and most people's goal is transformation they want it to be like them to do it if you were to take advantage of all five steps you would have a greater chance for transformation than if you stop with information it's 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 a little bit like you know i want to be able to write uh, a book but i don't know how to write well, and, and we say, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to give you four letters of the alphabet, <laughs> and we're not going to give you the whole alphabet. Well, you could, you could write maybe, a, a, depending on the four letters, uh, <laughs> you could write something, but uh, without all 26 letters or whatever. <laughs> many. So I could, I could go one step. So I could even maybe read a book on writing, but... It's different than if you have a mentor guiding you through yeah, a book. Yeah, if, if you have, let's talk about the five steps. Let's just introduce the five steps because I think people want to want to know. Okay, what what am I missing here? If I I think a lot of people are are being helped by a book or by a course. There's no question that that those the, those are helpful things to do. I mean, we but. It's nothing like if you had all five steps. So the first first step, information. The second step is application by an expert. They'll never not need to, need to be a, a, a teacher, a parent, a, a mentor. If you have somebody that can uh, help you apply the information. There's a difference between between uh, teaching and coaching. Teaching is, all, is imparting information. Coaching is helping a person apply the information. Now, all coaches are teachers, but not all teachers are coaches. So a coach is, when you have a coach, you have somebody that can do the at least the other three steps, help you with the other three steps. So the third step is confirmation. You have somebody who can tell you you're doing it correctly. And there's nothing like being sure of, of what you're doing. I mean, how, how do you know if... If if I'm doing it correctly, I mean, you read a book and and uh, <laughs> you don't know if you're doing it re- correctly. But if you have a qualified teacher that can say that, uh, oh, that's 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 doing it correctly. It's it's just like trying to teach yourself piano. Can you do it? Yes, you can. But it comes faster and better if you've got a good teacher who can listen to what you're playing and tell you that you're doing it correctly. You feel so much more confidence in being able to to have confirmation. The next step is the major debt f- downfall of informational only is is. Uh, consultation you have a question well what do you mean by this you know and uh, uh, when I would really love to ask uh, somebody the question well that's a great thing about having a teacher you know you can raise your hand or you can you can ask a question and you get an answer so you have application by an expert confirmation consultation and I thought for years that that was that was a four-step process, but but I found out when we were locked down in COVID, and we were forced to uh, go to individual training with Zoom. That uh, what Zoom gave us was an easy way to record the sessions, and what I found out is the fifth. Step is repetition. Repetition. Now, for years, we had classes, like two-day group seminars, two-day one-on-ones, and uh, we didn't record anything. And so our students went home with whatever notes that they took or whatever memories that they had. It was kind of like a a two-day knowledge dump 
and they couldn't relive that without coming back and taking the course. And what I found out was that people that came and took the one-on-one again or took a, a, a group class, uh, that they got, they had more transformation. And, and it's because of the repetition, and that's the, the fifth step. Well, what happens with uh, Zoom training, it's very easy to record those sessions. And by sending those recordings to the students, they find that they get more out of the replay than they do about the individual session. Yeah, and it's similar to if they're coming back to you to take another lesson, you're reinforcing yeah, the prior yeah. lesson. But it's even better than that because I found out this, that when I was teaching live, that uh, when you were taking notes, if you go to a live seminar – or you sit in a class at school, and you're taking notes. When you're taking notes, you're not listening to the instructor, and you miss things. And when you're listening to the instructor, you can't be taking you notes. You can't be taking notes. That's because of the principle of the conscious mind. That's right. But and on a replay, you can, you can stop it. You can rewind, you know, it's easy to do on a computer. You just, oh, I want to listen to that again. And then you can stop it and you can take notes. And the repetition is enhances the, the transformation. It accelerates the transformation. So don't forget that if you have the opportunity to have a class that you have a copy of that class. I, I had a, it's a tremendous advantage. It accelerates the transformation. And that's what everybody wants. They want, they want transformation. If you're willing to make the investment of having a teacher, being able to record the session, getting confirmation consultation, you can, you can save a lot of money and a lot of time to get to the, the level of, tra- of transformation. Well, okay. I can give you a couple other examples then of this transformation that you're talking about because really what you're hitting on is the, the light bulb moment is really an extension of the principal reinforcement. You're reinforcing what you're learning and applying it to your sport to grow to the next level. Okay. Performance analysis. <clears throat> you had a client years ago who wanted to be all American in sporting plays. To be all American in sporting plays, you have to be top five in the nation. Very difficult to do considering we have quite a few people that are master level that are really, really good. And this individual really wanted to get into that class. So he recorded performance analysis, but he did something different than what we taught. You know, we used to teach you need to write this in and then you can go back and review it. Well, he took that go back and review it. To another level. So when we he had a really good performance, he put a smiley face in the top right corner of his journal. At the end of the month, he would go back and reread and imprint all the smiley faces. Some some months there were only a handful, other months there were like a dozen. But within a year, he made the the All American team. And I remember that he came into the office and, and told you that he says, look, if it wasn't for this, I don't think I would have made it to that. And I think it's because going back and rereading, rereading and rereading what he put into that is very similar to what you're talking about with going back and reviewing information that you're, you're learning. Same principle, I think, is being applied. The second thing I think is um, – In addition to that is technology advancements. So when I grew up in the sport of rifle shooting, you would move the position around and Coach Curling would you make some changes. He would explain why he's doing stuff, but I couldn't see anything. There was no no diagram or anything. Well, today when I'm coaching individuals, which I still do some technical instruction for rifle shooting, I could take a picture with my iPad I could draw lines and show them angles. Say, okay, look, this is where we're at. This is where we want to go. So I make the change. They shoot. I take a picture. I got a side-by-side comparison. They said, look, here's where we were. This is where we're at. And then I've got a monitor where they're shooting, they're live shooting, and they could see that the groups are better. So now they have a better understanding of it. You know, you're reinforcing it by showing them data and information. So it's really the big key is – 
are we really taking advantage of the tools we have today to help our athletes that we're coaching transform to the next level? Well, it, let's, let's say that you're involved with a sport that um, there's no application by an expert available to you either for financial uh, resources not available right now or maybe a coach is not available that you can easily access. Uh, what, do you, what do you do about that? Well, a couple of tips. The first one is that uh, I had one of my clients tell me this that I thought was, was brilliant. He said, he says that uh, reading a good book a second time is more valuable than reading a new uh, five new books. Reading a good book second time is more important than re five new books as far as retention of information. And I thought, hmm, well, what, what does that mean? That means that if you do have a book that you really, really like, that you, it's helped you, read it again this year. Uh, you know, make it a, a, an effort. Uh, keep uh, the good books close at hand and occasionally reread re those books. You'll get more transformation out of that book because of the repetition step. And so if any time that you can record something, if, you're, if you have a, an opportunity to meet with a champion and, you, and interview a champion or go on YouTube where, I like, like, this is common today, that, that champions will be interviewed on YouTube and, the, and they come, out and come up with some brilliant uh, ways to help people. And those recordings, some of those recordings are free. A lot of ours are free. And uh, we have uh, opportunities for you to, to collect those, those things. You can download some of these things and uh, uh, take them more than once. Um, and it's, it's, it's like I think that people uh, make the mistake. That's one tip. The second make step, the suggestion that I have is that people tend to, tends to, to tend to stop at information thinking they've done it all. Like, well, we ask this question a lot of times. Uh, what percentage of what you do and what your sport is mental? And we, the most common answer we get is my sport's 90% mental. Then I ask the second question. Well, since you've been doing it, what percentage of time and money have you spent on the mental game? And they think about it. And, uh, <laughs> it's a very low number. Maybe 10% of my time and money I've spent on the mental game. And does, that just doesn't make sense. That just doesn't make sense. And I said, well, what have you done? Well, I read a book. Okay. Well, <laughs> if that's all you've got, <laughs> read that book more than once. Try to understand that the probability that you're going to have transformation is directly proportional to the number of, of these five steps that you can take advantage of. You may not be able to take advantage of all of them. If you're so fortunate that you can take advantage of all of them, you're going to, to, to do much, much better. I mean, that's the reason why we have teachers why we have textbooks, why we have tests, why we have accountability and things like that. It, it's, uh, it's a proven <laughs> method, and uh, uh, apply it to your sport. So basically, just to recap right quick, we start with information. Mm -hmm. But to really get that to make us transform to the next level of our performance to improve the probability that we're going to win, we need to get through the transformational process. So hopefully I can get this right. Start with information, then we go to application by an expert. Mm -hmm. So once we do that, then we move into consultation, confirmation, or confirmation, consultation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm sure you, you get confirmation and you get consultation. And then the final one, which sounds to be like the, the real important one, is they need repetition. They need reinforcement that they're doing 
all their understanding of doing these four things correctly to really take their game to the to the next level in doing that. So is there anything else you would add to that, knowing that we have this this pattern, we start with information, we go all the way to this repetition. Anything you add to our viewers? Yeah, there's one other thing that I've noticed as a habit of the top five percenters that we we know that do 95 percent of the winning in our our clients, is that they tend to use multiple ways to hear the same thing. In other words, they they have videos, they watch videos, they listen to audios, they listen to podcasts. So you have visual stimuli, you have audio stimuli, they read books, and each one of those ways to get information does something different for a person. And if you use multiple ways to do it, is, is watch the videos, um, read the books, listen to audios when you're in your car or when you when you're listening to podcasts and things like that you all of those things by having a variety of ways to to absorb and reinforce the information that tends to to accelerate transformation so basically if you're watching this channel you're wondering well how can i find out more information about this you can go to middlemanagement.com the book that we were referring to earlier is with winning in mind you know your book that's been around for years and years another book that people start with is attainment those two will provide good information but if you really want to transfer watch some more of these videos think about our patreon channel that we have and you can contact us at info at mental management for other options that you have if you like this information please subscribe click that like button and share it with an individual until next time hopefully you will be transforming your performance and reaching the next level